Hey y'all, Coach in a Fight here, talking about the abomination of desolation. Now, we want to put to rest all of the misunderstandings related to the abomination of desolation that we hear about over there in Matthew and chapter 24. Now, it's important because that's one of the things that the Messiah was telling us would happen before the end times were to occur. Um, if you look down in Matthew 24, you'll see that it's part of the tribulation of those days that would happen before we had the signs in the sky and before the earthquake and before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Well, we wanted to talk about this because, well, first of all, there's a lot of people asking questions about it, but even the ones that aren't asking questions uh, in the comment sections of our videos about the abominations of desolation there's a lot of people who have a false sense of hope when it comes to the abomination of desolation because they are thinking that it is still yet to come and you know a lot of people you know I, I, I say it slowly but there's a lot of people who think they're slick you know, they think they're going to be able to continue their current lifestyle, not make any modifications based on scripture until they see the abomination of desolation. That's going to be their heads up. That, hey, maybe I need to pick up my Bible and read Exodus chapter 20 through 24, which is the book of the covenant. Or maybe I need to, you know, start paying attention. Uh, to the teachings of the Messiah or you know maybe I need to get right with God when I see this abomination of desolation and so anytime you talk about you know end times they poke the head up and they say well there is no abomination of desolation you know uh, yet so I don't really need to do anything they can go back to sleep or go back to partying and whatever it is that they're doing well we want to go ahead in this video and we want to show you that the abomination of desolation we want to show you uh, what it is exactly what I'm show you what it is and we want to show you when it has occurred okay um, I'm going to try to go through this as quickly as I can I do have a lot to go over I'm not going to cover everything in my notes um, if I have to do this video again in the future I will do so based on the comments that we get if you know if somebody doesn't get it or whatever maybe we'll touch on it again but I'm going to run through here um, just to kind of you know um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just make this as simply as, as possible. I'm going to make this um, as simple, you know, even a child can understand it as we go through here and understand the abomination of desolation. All right, that's enough uh, introduction. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, we see here in verse 15 of the book of Matthew, it's, this is the Messiah talking. He says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which is in Judea flee unto the mountains. Okay, now... This gives us everything we need to understand what he's talking about, the abomination of desolation. You see right here where he says, uh, spoken of by Daniel, that's going to be uh, the meat of today's video. So we'll come back to that uh, here in just a second. You see where it says, standing in the holy place. The holy place, of course, is Jerusalem that he's talking about there and you see where he says uh he that readeth let him understand what that's saying is that you gotta you gotta read a lot of the scripture you gotta read all of the scripture to get an understanding of you know this this particular abomination of desolation that he's talking about because there there are a lot of them there there are several of them um there's many abominations of desolation in the bible including what you see over there antiochus epiphanies um 70 a.d when they knocked down the uh temple uh, the second temple there I mean there's probably a half a dozen other things that you could point to and say that's the abomination of desolation but we want to be very specific because the Messiah was and so we're going to go to jump over here and look now you look right here it says uh, let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains um, this right here was to be taken literally um, you know what's funny is that people take the wrong stuff literally and they take the wrong stuff metaphorically um, just as an aside note when you're talking about you know uh, the Messiah coming back on a cloud or when you talk about the 144,000 being virgins or you know people tend to take that stuff literally when he actually means it metaphorically and then when you see down here where he says um, let them that be in Judea flee into the mountains they take that metaphorically and it's like hey that's actually supposed to be a literal event but you know that's just a side note I wanted to 
throw that in there for my own grins and giggles. Let's jump over here and figure out what the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet exactly is. All right. Now, the first thing I want to do is show you the times that the word abomination is found in the book of Daniel. I went in here and I looked uh, in the King James Version of the Bible and I just looked, did a word search for the word abomination. And then I'm concentrating on uh, the book of Daniel because that's what the Messiah told us to look for it at. And you see that there are actually three times that the abomination of or the word abomination is used in the book of Daniel. One is over there in uh, chapter 9 and verse 27. You see, it says, overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Now, this one right here, I believe, is what causes the most confusion when it comes to the abomination of desolation. And I believe it makes it clear as to the importance of getting an understanding on what the abomination of desolation is you see up here where it's talking about and he shall confirm the covenant see a lot of people believe that this is an end times event the confirming of this covenant and they're tying it to the abomination of desolation and you know a lot of people start to use hermeneutics at this point start you know using interpretation and say okay you have this inv individual that's making a covenant and is somehow tied to this abomination which we saw over there in the book of Matthew um, supposed to be standing in a holy place well this must mean that they're going to build a third temple and that some antichrist type figure is going to be standing in that third temple confirming this covenant <laughs> there's so many errors in that understanding and you know we can get into that in another class but um which we should because you know it is it, it'll cover a lot that, that class will be pretty long understanding you know all of the misunderstandings and that one uh church doctrine that we'll that we hear about but if you notice the wording here, you can see that it is quite different. It says abominations he shall make desolate. Now over there in the book of Matthew, it said the abomination of desolation. So these aren't the same words and they are actually not the same event. This is not the same thing. What it's saying right there is the overspreading of abominations. What that's talking about is the sins or the transgressions or the badness that the priests and the Levites and the children of Israel were doing in Jerusalem that caused them to get kicked out in the first place. This overspreading of abominations made them desolate. It got them kicked out. And we're going to see here in a minute that that's a different type wording. I hope it's clear that it's making that it's talking about a different event because I really want to go on. That's not really what we're looking for at all when we're looking for the abomination of desolation. All right. Now, the other two times that you see the word abomination of desolation is over here in the book of Daniel, chapter 11 and verse 31 and Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 11. So we're getting closer to what we're supposed to be looking for when we're talking about the abomination of desolation, um, especially when we get there in, in um chapter 12 that's the one we're looking at but let's look at this one right here in uh chapter 11 and show that it too is not the abomination of desolation that we're looking for now look at the words right here they are similar when we're looking at the king james version there appear to be the same phrase abomination that maketh desolate you see right there in chapter 11 and you see abomination that maketh desolate over there in chapter 12 but I want to show you something right quick looking in the Septuagint of the Bible the Septuagint would have been the exact translation that the Messiah would have used there was no King James Version back then with the Messiah there was no Greek there was no Latin uh, translations he and Paul and John and Peter and everybody else that um, referenced the Old Testament of the Bible would have referenced the Septuagint of the Bible so let me come down here to Daniel chapter 11 and verse 31 in the Septuagint and you can see the wording that it says right here 
and shall remove the perpetual that's talking about the daily sacrifice and make the abomination desolate see how the wording is dis different there it says make the abomination desolate now let's look at the wording in chapter 12 in chapter 12 and verse 11 it says when the abomination of desolation shall be set up so these are talking about two different things right here one is saying the abomination of desolation which is the exact phrase that the Messiah used over here in the book of Matthew uh, abomination of desolation and when we look in chapter 11 of the book of Daniel it says and make the abomination desolate meaning to make the people leave to scatter the people abroad to make them go away um, basically what this is talking about is clearing out the, the, the town you know making everybody leave if you remember what the what Matthew told them over there it says then let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains that's what desolate means that's what it means to make the area desolate is they were leaving they were getting out but when you look over here it's saying make the abomination desolate so the abomination is what's becoming desolate not the people that's going away is somehow the abomination that's going away all right so it should be clear that that's not what the Messiah is pointing to when he's pointing to the abomination of desolation but when we come over here and look at chapter 12 we see his exact words this is in fact what he's talking about when he's talking about the abomination of desolation he's talking about Daniel chapter 12 and verse 11 all right, so now let's look a little bit closer at what's actually going on over in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 11. We're looking back at the King James Version of the Bible. Verse 11 says, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So this verse right here is telling us when we shall see the abomination of desolation. This is giving us an exact time frame on when the abomination of desolation will take place. It's saying 1,290 days and of course it means 1,290 years. If you don't understand that, you can check our videos, you can check thousands, ten thousands of other videos and uh, web articles and everything that go into you know explaining all of this I don't think anybody watching this video needs that type of explanation if you do let me know jump down in the comment section and I'll give you some links or, or some verses or whatever to make you understand that when he's talking about days right here he's actually talking about years right here and what he's telling them is that from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away Notice right there shall be taken away the daily sacrifice taken away and the abomination of desolation set up will be one thousand two hundred and ninety days or one thousand two hundred and ninety years. So to understand when the abomination of desolation was to be set up we have to come over and find out when was the daily sacrifice taken away and you can see over there in the book of 2nd Kings in chapter 25 that the daily sacrifice was taken away in the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon the daily sacrifice let me let me show you what the daily sacrifice is to understand what the daily sacrifice is we have to jump over to the book of numbers and chapter 28 verses 3 through 8 talks about the daily sacrifice this is a continual burnt offering which was ordained on Mount Sinai uh, it was a sacrifice to be made by fire this is an offering that these that these priests and these Levites did every day down there at the temple um, remember the job of the priest the job of the Levites those were the worker bees for the temple they the Levites did all of the uh, manual labor like putting up tents and taking down tents and and you know moving it around and all of that labor they would have been the ones who sweep the who swept the floor they were the musicians they were the labor crew those were the Levites there still are today 
if you understand the Levites of today, you understand that they are the firstborn males. Those are still the worker bees of the Lord. But anyway, we'll save that for another class. The priests, they actually did all of the ceremonial stuff. Well, this whole group of people, Levites and priests, went down to the temple every single day and made this offering. And what kind of offering was they making? There was a drink offering, which would have been wine. It tells you exactly how much wine they were supposed to offer there at at that time during that daily sacrifice. It tells you here the animals that were supposed to be sacrificed. There was actually two lambs that were supposed to be sacrificed. One lamb right here that was supposed to be sacrificed, and I believe it was sacrificed in the morning. And then the other lamb, you see down here in verse 8, that was sacrificed in the evening. This was the food for the Levites and the priests. This is where they got their food from. They um, There was part of the animal that it would have been burnt on the altar. And then part of the animal, these individuals would have ate, talking about the Levites and the priests. And then also you see right here where it says a meat offering. This was a bread offering that they would have made and they would have done this every day. I mean, when you think about it, the priests and the Levites had to eat every day, you know, and this is where they would have gotten their daily um, food from. They would have had lamb, bread and wine every every single day. This is where their food from. I stress that part. But uh, this is where they got their food from. This was a daily sacrifice. So then when you jump back over and you look at the book of 2 Kings, it was a Nebuchadnezzar and his bunch that went in and actually stopped this. We'll come back up here to verse 8, but you can see that in verse 9, they burned the house of the Lord. So they burned down the temple. You see down there in verse 11 that they actually took away the priests and the Levites actually took them into Babylon. That's that's where you have Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those were some of the individuals that were taken into Babylon during this time. And you see down there in verse 13 they, they took, that they took away all of the material in order to make that daily sacrifice. The spoons, the, the basins. The pots, the shovels, the snuffers, all of that thing, all of those things that they would have been using to keep this fire going to make this this uh, daily sacrifice. They actually took it into Babylon. Most of it was made out of silver or, or bronze or gold and that kind of stuff. Well, you remember that it was Nebuchadnezzar's son that was having a party there with his wives and his concubines and all of his friends and he decided that he was going to drink out of these holy vessels he was going to you know drink out of the, the uh, golden cups or whatever when he saw the handwriting on the wall those were the daily sacrifice instruments that was taken away so you come back up here to verse 8 and you say okay well when did this happen this happened in the years of Nebuchadnezzar the king now I can jump over to this document here which is a time chart of human history. It basically starts over the, all the way back there at Adam and goes all the way through President Obama showing you the people that actually ruled the planet. Well when we come back over here and we look at Nebuchadnezzar we can actually see when Nebuchadnezzar went in and done this act here if I can zoom in on it a little bit here we can see that it was in 606 that they started this 70 years of captivity that in 606 was the time that the daily sacrifice was taken away you're looking over here in first Kings and you can see that it was actually in the fifth month that the daily sacrifice was taken away and that's why they have uh, celebrations in the fifth month the uh, fast of the fifth month which they call uh, the tenth day of Av or whatever that's that's signifying when that daily sacrifice was taken away so when we look back here at this time chart starting in 606 BC and we look at the 1290 days where do we end up we end up in the year 685 which was the year that the Dome of the Rock was constructed on the Temple Mount. That is the abomination of desolation that Daniel spoke of was in 685. It was talking about the Dome of the Rock. Now, I don't know how much you know about this dome, but it is actually a Roman structure. 
not a Muslim structure. If you look at the other mu Muslim buildings, they all have a different shape. None of them have a dome on it. If you notice, all of our Capitol buildings have a dome on it. Let me show you a picture. Don't that look like the Capitol building there in Washington, D.C., and even your state? They all have this dome in it even the Vatican has this dome this is a Roman structure here this structure was actually built by the Roman Catholic Church they actually built this thing right on top of the Temple Mount this here is the abomination that make it desolate when they built this temple all of the Israelites left everybody left that's the desolation part you are looking at the abomination part let me show you the desolation part you can see here that desolate means deserted of people. Well, this is what happened there in 685. You had the Israelites who were in Jerusalem at the time all left Jerusalem and fled down into Western Africa and Southern Africa and other parts of the world. Now, if you think about it, you know, it kind of makes sense because now even as late as the 1940s there was nobody in Jerusalem claiming to be Israelites it is only after uh, I can't remember what year it was 1948 or 1946 or something like that that you have people the nation of Israel as we call them now that are going back over there it is because in 685 all of Israel left that was the, the desolation the desolation occurred in 685 when they put that dome of the rock there up because why because that's what the Messiah told them to do that's exactly what it told them to do when y'all see this building come up here in 685 to leave and so they left everybody followed everybody that was in Judea they fled into the mountains they went into Africa and other parts of the world that is the abomination of desolation talking about the dome of the rock so you say, well, what's the hope in all of this? Well, the hope, you know, in this is truth. You know, we, we, we really need truth in these times with all of these events that are taking place. Just like over there in the book of Matthew, you start to see how these end time events take place. Well, one of the first things that happens to let us know that we are in the tribulation or the apocalypse or whatever you want to call it is you have stars that are falling from heaven. And you have an earthquake that you read about over here in the book of Revelation in chapter 6. Well, it is after those major events that you start to see the people wake up to the fact that we are in the day of wrath. Okay, so when you see these events, you know, don't be confused. Think you're still waiting for an abomination of desolation because that's already happened. These are the events that signal the end times. These are the events that signal the tribulation and not an abomination of desolation because that's already occurred. There will be plenty of people that will see events that point to the apocalypse and say, hey, they ain't built a third temple over there in Jerusalem yet we must not be there yet and then they're gonna keep partying like we said like it's 1999 or whatever not doing what it is that we're supposed to be doing to prepare and what it is that we're supposed to be doing to prepare read the book of Exodus chapter 20 through 24 that is the commandments the judgments and the statutes like what you read about over there in the book of Malachi which is the last book of the Old Testament of the Bible even the last chapter of the Old Testament of the Bible which is chapter 4 of the book of Malachi it tells you about the commandments the statutes and the judgments and how he will send Elijah the prophet talking about the Elijah spirit that will come and help us to make it through the tribulation this is the father's end time escape plan is that he's going to send us some help in order to survive in the form of the Elijah spirit so with that I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up if you got something out of it go ahead and hit the like button if you didn't go ahead and hit the dislike button if you have any questions or anything like that if we need to talk about anything a little bit further please jump down in the comment section and may our father bless you and keep you may our father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may our father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.